All right, gang, I have got this fiasco going on here. Uh, I have found the problem, but I, want, I put it back to original so you can see what's going on. So basically I have a Neotech 2701 medium resolution full family version. Uh, and you can tell that it's the full family version by the way that it is. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, there's a line filter on the side here that mounts to the side. There's two different versions of the 2701. Uh, and this one is what's known as the full family version. Uh, pin cushion board up here and the line filter that mounts to the side and all that jazz. Now the, the problem with this or the symptom it was having was, uh, I actually, well actually let's go back. I picked this up in a lot of chassis. Uh, with, I think a, a handful of other ones and I just set this aside. I tested it and it was ticking. It was going tick and one tick, one tick. So I just set it aside and I figured I'll get to it later. Well, now that time has come and it's still doing the same thing. It's ticking every 1.5 seconds or so. And I thought, okay, let's try and get this figured out. Of course, normally that's probably a power supply section problem or bad HOT is only real reason that ever ticks on you. Uh, but in this, in this case, that's not the reason. I spent about 45 minutes troubleshooting this and I found the problem. So I put it back to the way that it was so you can experience what it sounds like, what is happening when this is going on. Um, so there's no, the first step obviously like any other one is to remove the power supply or isolate it from the rest of the chassis and see if your light bulb lights up and uh, test your power supply. Uh, well, in this case, there's not really any way to do that. There's no real, like on the uh, 2501, you can just pull one, that one leg of R117 out and test it on there. There's no single point on this 2701 full family version to do that. The easiest way to do that is to just remove the HOT. Take the HOT out of the, out of the chassis, and then you can use, do your light bulb test. And the way you uh, measure B plus on this chassis is there's three big diodes here in the power supply section. Uh, it's D106. D107 and D108. Uh, right here on the anode of D106 is where you hook your lead to for your B+. So in that case, uh, what you do is you would remove your HOT from the chassis and then test hook up a, a lead or a uh, alligator clip to the anode of D106 right here, right there, and then uh, use your light bulb against your frame and see if it lights up. Uh, just right here, you know, my other light bulb died from all the, the months and months of tossing it over off to the side. So I had to get another uh, replacement one here. And you just touch this to your frame and take your lead and touch the light bulb. It should light up. Now, that wasn't happening. What was happening was light bulb would go flash, flash, flash along with the uh, B+. Uh, so I knew at that point I still had the problem. So let's go over. Okay, so the... The flyback is removed because I did that in my troubleshooting trying to figure out why the, the ticking was still going on with the HOT out. Uh, and I'm going to re replace it anyway because the most common fault on these is uh, the focus drift or brightness drift. So I'm going to replace the flyback anyway. Uh, and the replacements that are currently out there are known to be good. So I'm going to replace it anyway. So that's why that's out. Uh, also for ease of access to the testing around the HOT. So this is the way that it, it's all complete and together. Uh, minus uh, the flyback. So the power supply is ticking uh, and I'm going to remove the HOT so you can experience what it sounds like. Uh, and it sounds, the, what you're going to hear is the same way it sounds if it's fully hooked up to a tube as well. But before we do that, whenever you have ticking on these chassis, you want to, first thing you would check is always the HOT because the HOT is shorted, you're going to have the power supply ticking like that. So if we take, oops, sorry about that. I hit the camera. If we take our meter here and untangle our leads, which is they're forever tangled, uh, if we go to diode checker and we go to the HOT, which is right here, we'll go negative on center and positive to each leg. Dead short. Dead short. So let's see if I can get a better view on this here. If we go here, and then I touch uh, this leg, dead short. This leg, dead short. So the HOT is shorted, right? Well, it's not. Uh, I'm going to remove it. Turn my fan on. 
and I forgot to turn on the iron first because I'm a bonehead. So I, I was troubleshooting this. I'm like, oh, the HOT is shorted. That should be easy to fix. Uh, no, it took me about 45 minutes of further troubleshooting to figure out what's going on. Um, I don't want to spoil it until I get the HOT out. Uh, well, I guess while we're waiting, we can take the screw out here. Okay. Now let's get this HOT out of here. Okay, sorry about that, my phone rang, so let's get this HOT out of here. And we can see what exactly is going on. Again, I already found the problem, but I wanted to showcase this in case somebody else has this in the future. And that's kind of the whole point of these videos. And normally I, I would use my uh, desoldering station. Uh, an, a viewer was very kind enough to send me a brand new handle. Uh, let's show you. A brand new handle. I've already used it and it's fantastic and very much appreciated. And like I say, I normally would use it, but I don't want to wait for it to heat up and uh, use it for just three pads. If I was doing a complete cap kit overhaul or whatever the case may be, I would definitely turn on and use it. But for just these three pads, I'm just going to use the braid here real quick. So, all right, there we go. Now, should be able to take this HOT out of here and we'll do a little show and tell. There we go. Now, the HOT was shorted, right? Well, let's see. If we go negative center, positive to the leg, nope, not shorted. Other leg is open, um, that's normal. But that's because these two legs in the chassis are connected to each other, so in the chassis it'll read 0.435 or 8 and 0.438, but out, out of the chassis it uh, only reads it to one leg. But the HOT is not shorted. So if we go back to the pads, and we test the pads again, the pads are dead short. And dead short. So we got something on the trace or on the circuit that's shorted that shouldn't be. Now when you follow this out, Let's see if we can tr trace it out, no pun intended. Um, if we follow, for instance, uh, the middle leg here, if we follow this, it goes up this trace here, uh, it goes across C149, it goes this way to the flyback, uh, this way across this capacitor, and then straight to this leg of, you can't even see it, I'm sorry. We go from here, up this way, it goes across C450. There's a capacitor right here. Uh, it goes up this leg across C149, and it goes this way to this leg of the flyback, across this capacitor here, and then straight to this header pin for the horizontal. And that's it. So there's this component is out, flyback is out. We have this capacitor here, we have this capacitor here, and this capacitor here, C450. So C450, C149, I don't know what this, I think it's a capacitor here, it doesn't matter. Uh, and that's it, so one, two, three components. And that's the only thing that attaches the center leg to the circuit that would account for it ringing over to here or having continuity over to this leg. So, uh, we know it's not the header pin. If we turn this over and look, that component is, uh, that's on there, that's just a jumper. Okay, so that's a jumper. This here is a jumper. And so that's not going to be bad. So we can count this out. We can count the jumper out. Uh, C149, if we ring out C149, we can find out if it's shorted. And if we touch our leads, leads are shorted. We touch the C149, and we're reading a diode 0.45 voltage drop. So it's not shorted. So that leaves C450. If we read across C450, well, 
let's just go to ohms here. I don't know why it's being finicky. 0 0.1 ohms <laughs> across 450. Uh, so now if we take 450 out of the circuit, we'll go back to continuity. Actually, you know what? I don't want to do that just yet. I'm sorry, I forgot. We got to hear it ticking. Let's leave 450. Let's put it back in. I'm sorry, I forgot. Um, okay. Let's make sure that we're still shorted here. Center to uh, outside. Still shorted. Okay, so under normal circumstances, you would be able to remove the HOT and then do your light bulb test. I turn my fan back off so we can hear it. Um, I've already shown how to hook it up and we'll sh after we get this fixed I'll hook it up again so you can see one more time. But right now under normal circumstances you'd be able to do your light bulb test or verify your power supply section. Uh, so let's grab our light bulb and let's grab, uh, I've got my leads here already from testing. And this is the, this uh, light bulb I can actually clip on a, a lead to, it'll stay, probably not, nope, son of a bitch. Come on, Lisa Loeb, stay on there. All right. Not that this matters, but uh, I want to kind of prep that on there. So um, we clip on the anode of D106. And just for preparation purposes, I'll show you what's going on. All right. So we have a dead short across the HOT, and it's not the HOT. So when you have a dead short across the HOT, the, the, the power supply is going to try and power up, and it senses the short, and it shuts down. It'll power up and shut down, power up and shut down. So let's hook up our power, which goes right here. We got the connection. All right, so um, here we go. One, two, three. Well, that's odd. It should be ticking. Hmm. That's very odd. And the light bulb lights up. Oh, you... Oh, forget it. Let's just... Well, that doesn't make any sense. Hmm. Let's turn it off again. Well, that's not what it was doing before. Um... Hmm. Before, in this exact scenario, when I was testing it, it was going tick, tick, and I was not getting the light bulb. Why is it letting me do that now? Hmm. I did change out the caps in the power supply trying to figure this out, and this is the first time I've tested it with the caps in, and this reconfigured to be bad. Huh. I also had the the uh, flyback installed, so that's different between when it was failing before with the HOT out and ticking. The only difference is I got new caps in the power supply and the flyback out, but that shouldn't affect it at all unless the original power supply caps were bad on top of that being shorted. That may be the case. Let's try that again. Okay, we get the we get the initial the initial high chirp from the power supply turning on and it still works huh well I guess disregard my uh, advice here I don't have an explanation because it before when I was doing this exact test it was chirp it was tick tick and the light bulb would flash flash so huh all right well I guess possibly either having the flyback out or changing out the, the caps in the power supply might have been a double whammy. I mean, we might have had, uh, what I'm going to show you here, we might have had that problem coupled with bad caps in the power supply. After changing the, the caps in the power supply, uh, it's not as uh, susceptible to the shorted component here. So that's just odd. Hmm. Well, let's get this flip back around 
and I'll show you what the actual problem is that's causing the HOT to be shorted in circuit. So if we turn this over here and we remove C450 like we were going to do a moment ago, I'm still baffled by that because in the same configuration before it was ticking with HOT out and now it's not. I can only account for that as being new caps in the power supply. Uh, so I wanted to show that in action, but I guess we're not going to be able to do that. But it still is not going to work, and it's still going to tick under full load with the uh, with the tube hooked up because of this right here. I think you guys are going to like. Oh. <laughs> What uh, you're about to see here, if I can get this out. C450 is bad. It is burned up and destroyed. There's not much of a contrast there. There you go. It is just melted and burned and internally shorted. And now with this out, let's test our pads again. And we'll touch our leads. And if you recall before, center to this leg, not shorted. Center to this leg, not shorted. So we are no longer shorted with C450 out of circuit. And if we take C450 itself and just touch the legs here, we get dead short. So C450 is our culprit. I'm going to have to see if I can find a replacement for that. Um, in the meantime, we can put this all back together. Um, and I want to actually, you know, I think I, let's test the Let's test the B plus one more time with the short out. And I want to see if it does anything different. It shouldn't, um, but I was getting a little bit of hissing from that. I don't know if you could hear it, but I was getting a little bit of hissing when the light bulb was operational. I want to see if that hissing is gone now. It very well may be. All right, so we're still hooked up over here. I got to take this and plug this in. All right, so we're ready to go here. Let's see uh, what happens. One, two, three. Okay, the little quick chirp. And then I'm still getting the hissing a bit, but it's operational. Huh, I'm mystified. I, I can only attribute, I can only attribute the fact that it's not ticking with the shorted 450 as to the caps. That's all I can, uh, there's two caps right here and all these up here. That's the only difference between when it was ticking before with this out versus now. So, all right, anyway, I've mentioned that before. All right, so let's just move on. Uh, I, it's operational now, we have a functioning light bulb. Uh, our shorted component is out. So I'm gonna get the HOT reinstalled. I'm gonna get a new 450 installed. I'm gonna replace the flyback, finish the complete cap kit, and then let's test it out. I mean, there's really not much else to go over. There is slight differences on the 2701 versus the 2700. Uh, there's a pin cushion board attached to the side up here on the frame. Uh, neck boards are the same, um, things like that. So relatively the same. Uh, so anyway, yeah, I think what we'll do, this is obviously 2701, this is the medium res version of the 2700, and 2702 would be the VGA only version. So 2700 is standard, 2701 is medium, and 2702 is VGA. That's the series of chassis. It's the same thing with 2500, 2501, and 2502. Uh, same deal. So, um, all right. Well, that being said, um, I guess, uh, yeah, let me get this all rebuilt, uh, reflow, new caps, the rest of the caps, neck board included, put the new flyback on it, and uh, I gotta get this reinstalled over here on the side. There's a screw that goes through the side and holds this uh, line filter on the side. 
and then uh, I guess we'll test it. And it, our, our, we know our power supply is operational. And then uh, for B plus, B plus, you adjust here at this R111, this pot right there, and you want to set it to 100 volts. Now, normally the Neotex are 125 VDC for B plus, but for this series of chassis, the 2701, the full family 2701, uh, it's uh, 100 volts. So we'll have to get that set, make sure it's good. Uh, but all right, let's get all the work done, come back and see if we can uh, get it to work the way it's supposed to. All right. So I'm in the middle of this. I've got all of the caps replaced, the full reflow done, and I'm getting ready to replace this capacitor that burned up C450. Uh, I got the new flyback ready to go in, but of course I wanted to do all this before I put the flyback in. But I wanted to show the rating of the capacitor so if we look here, it is a, uh, zoom out a little bit. Okay, it's supposed to be a 400 and, oh, I'm sorry. It's supposed to be a 561K, two kilovolt. I don't know if you can even make that out. Let's try some more light here or a different contrast maybe. Um, there we go. 561K, two it's 2KV561K. This is what it's supposed to be. That's what this one was. This one that's shorted and all burned up. It's 561K and 2 kilovolt. Now I had to get out a little micro microscope and look at this, or uh, not a microscope, I had to look at a uh, magnifying glass and it's got printed on it 561K 2KV. And I think it's actually on this side. If you look at it just right, you can make out 561K and 2KV. So it's 561K and 2 kilovolt. And it just so happens that I got a Neotech 2515C right here. And the same capacitor resides right here in this location, C421. C421 right there is the exact same capacitor. So I was able to rob it from a 2515C. Same rating, same capacitor. We're gonna put it in here. We're going to install it in here, and then we'll get our uh, HOT reinstalled, our flyback reinstalled, everything hooked back up and connected, and then we'll test it out and see if it works. And all right, well, here it is, all back together. Uh, full reflow, full new cap kit, including filter cap, pen cushion board, new flyback. I've got the screen pot turned up slightly because they come from the factory all the way down. Uh, don't want to, you don't want to forget that because you'll turn it on and have no image, with, but you'll, you'll have heater voltage and neck glow and you'll have high voltage but you'll have no image you don't want to you don't want to forget to turn the screen pot up on the new flybacks uh, all the neck boards been reworked and everything i need to put the the metal case back on but i'm going to wait until we fire it up in case we're missing the color or have some type of neck board problem i don't want to take this thing back out because it solders in uh, on all the uh, ground points so we'll sit, we'll put this uh, back in later uh, but for now, yeah, it's ready to go. We had, uh, so far, the only thing we found was this burned up C450. And we replaced it with the correct rating and uh, everything of uh, the right replacement, I should say. So I guess let's get it on a tube and turn it on and see if it works. All right, here we go. We are set up on a dedicated... Uh, Neotech 2701 tube and yoke and everything. Uh, this chassis is missing the... Uh, mounting bars to go across the main bars here. So it's just kind of sitting in here precariously, but it'll be okay It's gonna be hard to kind of get to some stuff, but we'll see if we can make it work uh, All of the pots have been set to the center uh, except for horizontal the supplemental horizontal frequency pot That's right there. That's right where it's I, that's right where it came. I did not adjust that because it can cause problems uh, But the supplemental horizontal position that's down in here is set to the middle our two pin cushion pots on the pin cushion board are set to this middle. Uh, vertical linearity, H phase that are in there, down in there, in the middle. Our B plus pots in the middle. Uh, and I did not touch the X-ray pot. Uh, we are set up to give it a medium resolution signal, so let's turn it on. We are also set to check our B plus. It should be 100 volts DC. If not, we will adjust it at that pot right there. And let's uh, just make sure that uh, it turns on. And if it does, we get an image, and hopefully we're close to 100 volts, and if not, we'll adjust it, and let's cross our fingers here. One, two, three. And it's ticking. Okay, this is what it was doing before. Listen. Huh. 
Hmm, it tried to turn on. What was our B plus doing there? We're not getting a reading. Well, um, oh, dang it, let's turn that off. Well, uh, we know it's not going to be a cap problem. We know it's not going to be a flyback problem. Uh, all I can suggest now, we know our power supply is working because our light bulb test worked. All I can suggest now is some other component that's faulty. Uh, we'll double check the HOT again because when I first turned it on, it, it almost turned on and then it zapped itself off. So um, I wonder if possibly it's the x-ray pot is going into shutdown. Um, let's adjust our horizontal hold pot just in case it's way off whack and causing this. I'm going to have to move this. Um, let's see. Let's just put it in the middle. Um, let's put this one in the middle as well. Um, we may have to do some tweaking on our x-ray pot. It could be just going into shutdown because the x-ray pot's not adjusted properly. Um, you know, that very well could be the case. Let's try it again now. One, two, three. No, ticking. Tick. Tick. It's getting louder. Hmm, you know what? I wonder if our B plus is not adjusted properly or too low and it's not letting it come online. Nope. Adjusting the B plus pot does nothing and put it back in the middle. Well, let me uh, do some troubleshooting and see if I can figure out what's going on. Well, I found the problem. It turns out it was the HOT. Uh, under load, it failed. It was not working under load. So it, it's not surprising that when this capacitor burned itself up uh, and shorted, it damaged the HOT to a point where it wouldn't output what it's supposed to. So it tested okay out of circuit. And tested okay in circuit once we changed out the burned up capacitor, but under load, nope, it would not output. So I put a replacement in there, uh, same model. Uh, was it NTE2533? Yep, and uh, got the replacement one installed right there. And it powered up and works perfectly. Uh, so I do want to mention that I, I gave you the wrong information. When testing B+, you want to go to the cathode of D106, not the anode. The anode is the side that faces the transformer. The negative side with the stripe is the cathode, and that's what you want to hook to, not the anode. If you hook to the anode, the one closest to the transformer without the stripe, you won't read anything. So that's my mistake. I'm sorry. I put that on the wrong side. Uh, so now we have it on the correct side, so we should be able to read B plus properly. And uh, otherwise, yeah, this uh, ended up being a faulty HOT under load and a blown up C450. So if we turn test pattern generator on now uh, and we turn this on, here we go. One, two, three. Comes right on. And what do we get? Nothing. Hmm. Why is it not working? There we go. Oh, okay. My um, sink wire, it was loose in my... You can see here if I tap on this. Yeah, so I got a loose connection here. But, as we can see, glorious. Um, we need to shift our image over. I'm not too worried about that. But if we go through here, beautiful color bars. Fantastic, beautiful RGB. Couldn't ask for a better RGB. Little gousing here, but not a big deal. Uh, just beautiful. Now, if we were to um, disconnect the test pattern generator and hook up an actual PCB, in this case, Cruise in USA, uh, and my, my uh, sync wire came out, so I'll have to hook that back up. 
trying to do this one handed here. There we go. Now, let's see if I can get this sink wire back in. There we go. And voila. Nice solid staple picture, perfectly square, beautiful colors. It might be a little bit too blue, but I'm not going to worry about that at the moment. Um, yeah, it uh, could not have had a better turnout. And you hear this odd noise this is making? Listen. I don't know if you can hear that, but that's normal sound. If you come across one of these and it's making that whoop, 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 whoop sound, uh, that's perfectly normal for these. Don't worry about that. But as you can see, we have a glorious, perfect picture. It gets a little washed out in the in the camera here without the light on. Let's turn the light on. That might make it a bit better. Uh, but yeah, it's glorious, beautiful colors, perfectly square image. The pin pin cushion is adjusted properly. Uh, size, shape, position, everything is perfect and glorious. And our B plus is 100.4. It dips between 100.1 and 100.4, but perfect. Now uh, there's a three, right? Three, four, and yeah, I just, it could not have been a better turnout. So we did the full cap kit, the full reflow, new flyback. I did all the neck board rework, of course, as well. Uh, new uh, filter cap, uh, and we had a burned up C450 caused by who knows what, uh, which took out and damaged the HOT under load. It would not work. So that's really all it was. After all the reflow and rework, it's looking and working perfectly. So, yeah, and that, hear that weird noise? Sounds like a freq high frequency noise and scrambling and whatnot. That's every one of these I ever worked on has that same noise. Every one I ever worked on. So, yeah, it's nothing to worry about. The image is perfect and stable. It's not going like this. So, nothing to worry about. And, uh, yeah, uh, it's operational with no issues. So, Thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned something. I'll leave this run for a number of hours, make sure nothing goes wrong. And if, assuming it doesn't, I'll get my uh, case put back on the uh, back of the back of the neck board there. And we'll add this back to the pile of uh, spare chassis. So, yeah, can't complain. Now, of course, this is a dedicated 2701, and I had the the other uh, the other chassis here that normally sits on this tube. This is going to go back on here and be a spare monitor, and then I'll have a spare chassis in the case this one goes bad. So uh, yeah, that's it. I appreciate it. Like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.